without even know why we do what we do. We just do it and then scratch our head and wonder what's wrong with me. And there's nothing wrong really. So that's, uh, these are our mascots. Basically it just represents that we're all, we're all trans monkeys. And so monkey see, monkey do. The good thing about this trans monkey is it knows how to tap on itself. Jeez. <laughs> And that's a lot different than what a lot of adults and children don't know how to do yet. But that's what I'm here is to educate people and to, to help them create a better life. You know, we have a tendency to replicate what was done to us and how we were treated and not even do it consciously. We just do it, you know, in a trance. We just go into our autonomic responding system and act the way we do and not even know why. And so what we're doing is we're, basically peeling the scales from your eyes so you actually see, wow, I'm not really broken. I'm just a good student of my um, crazy family, basically. <laughs> and you can update your memories. And that's the biggest crutch of it all is that you can actually change what you hold inside you. And of course your brain uh, uses what you re recaptured and just reuse it on you. It's the first green recycling system. It recycles our emotions, recycle our feelings, recycle our autonomic responses and not even know why we act the way we do. So what we wanna do is educate your prefrontal cortex instead of let your limbic system drive the bus and then you get unhappy where you've landed or, or you know, wherever you are because this system is designed to keep you alive and keep you in, in sync with where we come from. So basically we're just educating people showing them that, hey, you know what? If you change your memories in your mind, you don't change what happened. You only change what your brain will reuse on you. That's all you yeah. change, you know? And of course, there's some, some presumed truths that we operate from. Everything inside your head is yourself. That means your mom cannot fit inside your head. The space is too small. <laughs> so you're holding it, you're replicating it. You're the movie director and you're all actors in your memories. And if you have unpleasant memories, go change them. Mm, that's, yeah. that's simple. Yeah, it's brilliant. Robert, a lot of the parents in our group often talk about anxiety and depression. Could you uh, talk about that from a faster EFT perspective, like what you believe about that? Well, anxiety is just a, it's a self-protective mechanism. It's, it's trying to keep you safe based on what your brain has captured and organized. Um, the, the key to setting yourself free from that is going to the cause, which is some experiences. Uh, we also uh, consciously, we're trying to protect ourselves by holding on to the memories or replaying the memories or uh, anticipating the worst possible scenarios, which also feeds the problem and amplifies the problem. So the, the truth is depression, uh, there is no test for a chemical problem just like there's no test for a happy problem that the deal is is that that the brain is designed to keep you alive and if you've had uh, you know traumas it's just like i worked with a young man just the other day he's in his i don't know 30s or maybe 40s and um, so his major trauma in this life which had a major physical effect uh, crohn's disease stomach disease and all this stuff so we back it up and it actually goes back to uh, being in gymnastics. Basically, he's seeing these other kids getting hurt. And his brain says, I don't want to get hurt. So therefore, he becomes super fearful. And when his coach is trying to make him do these exercises, this fear inside him is, is holding him back. And yet the coach is not a very nice coach. He beats him, humiliates him, and tries to make him do the exercises, which now he has a, a gnawing in his stomach all the time for fear of going back to, the, to the, 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 the class. And then he takes it home. So now he's anxious all the time. Also reminds me of a psychiatric nurse. And you know she was diagnosed ADD or ADHD. And, and we started peeling back her history and come to find out you know, when she comes home from school, she's abused at, at, at where the babysitters. So throughout the whole day at school, guess what she's not doing? She's not learning because in her mind, she's replaying the fears, what's gonna to happen today, how bad is it gonna be, is it gonna be as bad as yesterday? You try to learn when you're really stressed and have a lot of anxiety going on. But these are emotionally induced and programmed from our experiences. So uh, again, you know, depression, 
is a system designed to keep you in alignment with mom, dad, and or experiences by what you witness. And it's, you know, you can change that by changing memories and references. And so this young man, even though he's older now, he has this high anxiety. I mean, he couldn't eat anything. He, I mean, it was just got really bad, but now he could eat anything. His anxiety is different. He, he raises children totally different. And his, his value has gone way up compared to where he came from because he was so anxious and he learned to be anxious from his war zone, which is basically school and school and in gymnastics. Again, you'd say, you know, they said, I don't know why kids have any problems. How could they have stress? They have a beautiful life and they don't realize majority of our adult problems are programmed from our children, our childhood, from school, from big brother, big sister, whoever else, mom, dad, or big whoever that has an emotional impact. You know, it's, it's just interesting how each little experience, we see it as an adult, as a little experience. A young girl and her family moved from a small house to a big house. And from that point forward, she felt like her life had fallen apart. You got a bigger home, nicer home, nicer school, but she lost everything in her world. I lost my friends. I lost my comfort. I lost my best friend. Now here she's at a new school and now she's really sad and depressed. And from that point forward, she created the life of depression because of one major, what we would call a PTSD, post-traumatic stress disruption, I would call it. It's not a disorder, it's a coping mechanism. So again, there's many models to depression. There's many reasons why people have depression or create depression is because of experiences. And of course, you know, you think about it when I work with um, women, for example, the, the mere act of pregnancy and giving birth to a child is a major post-traumatic stress distress. And her life and her, her life becomes very depressing because of not only the labor, not only the mean doctor, not only her fear that she's going to get fat or whatever her problem was, had a major impact on her health. And plus her whole life change. Now she's stuck with this child that she has to take care of 100% of her time, losing her freedom. That's a trauma for some women. So it all depends on the mindset and the world and your programming. So there's many variables, but the truth is you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just your brain is reusing some of your emotional unpleasant experiences to keep you in a place that you don't want to be. And so like the, the guy who came to you who had the did gymnastics as a kid. So when he's coming to you, like he's not, he's not aware that that was his challenge. So he's turning up to see you for the first time. And, and, and what is he saying to you that are his apparent problems in life? Well, well, his problem is, is that several things. One, you know, if you look at his, his work environment, now he's from a different country. He's not from the U S and he's here on a visa. He has his wife and his child and he's working in what he would consider a safe job. Well, the problem is his safe job is his livelihood. And of course he's having issues with the boss because he's not doing it right. And employees aren't working right. And so again, remember if you're a gymnastics person, you have to get everything right. There is no room for error. And of course, if there is error, you're going to get hurt. So here it is. He's at a job taking his gymnastics values and attitude with him. And it's eating his stomach up. Is eating, he's, you know, he's trying to eat all the right foods, but yet the, he's thinking the stomach is the problem. It's, it's Crohn's disease. It's this disease or that disease. I said, that's not the problem. You know, it's like Dr. Eric Robbins, you know, he's a urologist and, you know, the woman comes in, you know, and she's got, uh, you know, urinary or this area problems. And he asks the question, any physical, or emotional, or sexual abuse it seems to be there's always something going on that has happened. So he addresses the memory and all of a sudden that part of the body starts to heal itself. And basically the mind will use memories and replicate those memories, feelings, and emotions in the body. And that's how the limbic system catches our conscious attention. It grabs us with a feeling in our gut and our stomach and panic attacks are designed to keep you safe. So all of these are just how the brain works. So his was just mainly, this seems to be the problem. Most of the time when a client comes to see me, they say X is the problem. I look at it, X is not the problem. It's a symptom. You change the problem, which usually is the guy with the match in his hand, then all the fires are gone. 
It's like with weight loss. A lot of people will go to dieting and exercise to lose weight. Well, that's not the problem. Weight is not a problem. It's a symptom. And the weight, you lose it once, it should be solved forever, but it's not a diet problem and it's not an exercise problem. It's emotional condition problem. Food equals love. Food is comfort. Uh, we're conditioned to clean the plate. If you don't clean the plate, you get beaten. So therefore you continue to clean the plate. You want to be loved and accepted. Therefore you eat. You have time eating, eating styles, scarf eating. You have all these eating programs. And of course, diets and exercise will never solve those problems. So you go on your diet, you lose your weight, you get off the diet, you put all the weight back on plus a few extra pounds. And every time you try a diet, you feel like a big time loser because it always came, comes back because they're not addressing the problem, which is memories and emotional conditionings. This is the true key. Yeah. And Robert, that guy, like, it's not always huge traumas either, because I think one no. of the myths that we have is that, you know, the gym instructor could have just been, you know, quite like humiliated him a couple of times in front of people, that kind of thing that people don't think is quite a big thing. But for him, it was yeah. had a major impact on his life. Could you speak yeah. a bit more to that? Like, it's not always yeah. huge things no. that people think. It could be something simple. Yeah. I mean, like I worked with a woman one time and uh, the biggest memory, and of course she said, I was so humiliated, so embarrassed. And I felt people were making fun of me. And as we started working on the memory, basically the school teacher just asked her to read. And, you know, she, English wasn't her first language. Asked her to read and say, go ahead and read it again, read it again. And so she's now feeling humiliated, embarrassed and shame. But when we cleaned it all up, she realized the teacher was being kind helping her to practice reading. So again, her perception is one, but reality when you release the emotions, cause she was using her uh, mode of opera, modus operandi, how to operate. We see the things from our own perceptions and we distort everything. And once we release the emotional belief, then all of a sudden she realized the teacher was being kind, not mean, but we translate it that way. So again, it's, it's it, sometimes it's so little and so subtle and it could be even created by watching a TV show. We can create a fear, create an anxiety by watching a TV show. You know, I remember I was around 18 years old and I watched my buddies and I went to the movie theater and we watched this movie. About six weeks later, months later, I decided we're gonna go to a local lake called Fort Cobb. We drive out there, I'm swimming across the lake and in my mind, the theme of that movie started playing. Don't, 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 oh shit, sharks. Now, there are no sharks in Oklahoma, and I never saw a shark in my life. only saw one on TV, on the screen. But my mind captured a fear and replicated it in a local lake where there are no sharks. Again, this is what the brain does. So it could be little things. It could be something that your mom and dad experienced or something you watched on TV, or it could be a dream, and you start creating a whole life around this emotional trauma. So the brain is very simple when you understand it. It's very complex when you don't know what you're playing with. So you might be scaring some of the parents out there now because they're thinking, oh gosh, you know, we always get this question. I'm going to, <laughs> like, I'm going to stuff up my kids. I'm going to traumatize them. No, what well, would you say to the parents that are getting worried by listening to this? Um, well, I mean, the, the, the truth is you cannot give your children anything that you don't have. That means yeah. if you don't have emotional stability, you cannot give them some emotional stability. If you have fears, you're going to give them your fears. If you're going to have your worries. You cannot give them something. Matter of fact, I venture to say a majority of you guys, listen to me, will look at your parents and said they didn't love me the right way. All right. Again, we have a tendency to have that model of thinking. So if you're a parent and you want to be a good influence on your children, do this change the unpleasant memories that you hold inside yourself. Address and release the fears. Address and release your hurts. Learn how to be emotionally intelligent. Emotionally intelligent means I feel bad, I don't like the bad feeling, so I'm gonna change this. And of course, one of the things we talk about is, uh, you know, again, as I said earlier, everything inside you is you. That means when you have a memory of anything, when you recall the memory, you're all actors and players of the memory because they're not here right now. That means this is your mind. These are your memories. 
and I give you permission starting today to change the unpleasant ones. Keep all the good ones. And if you do that, you'll be not only a good example for your children, but you're going to give them something that you wish you had. And that is someone who's a little bit more emotionally balanced, someone who understands and someone who, who can actually help your, your, your children and by being a better parent, you know, granted, I couldn't have been a better parent in the past because I had no knowledge on how to be. I only gave them what was given to me. And that's what we all do. And so you just forgive yourself, learn from this and start today. Now, granted, your children have the right to be miserable. They have the right to reject the new you. And by the way, your parents tried to change you too. And you said, nope, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so again, uh, your goal as a parent is to make sure you're emotionally healthy. Make sure you clean up your own fears, worries, and hurts of the pains of the past. And as you do that, you'll naturally act differently without trying. It's not like your, your parents are going to sit around and say, oh, let me teach you how to be angry. Let me teach you how to be judgmental and condemning. They're just going to do it without thinking. And you do it without thinking. So if you change what's, what's driving the bad behavior, you change the whole world for you. And your world can impact your children. So when I first came to this work, I found uh, probably when the biggest shifts came for me was when I recognized, like you just said, that everyone inside my head is, is me rather than me placing the blame on my parents or something outside of me. And one of um, your, the, my favorite concepts of yours is the upper and lower model of the world. Could right. you talk a little about that, please? Yeah, uh, the lower model of the world is what we're all raised into, we're born into. And basically, if you think about it, you take a child, they're born into this world and they're helpless. Matter of fact, you give birth to a child, you walk out of the room and never return, the child dies. So that child needs us. Now that child is a learning machine. That means if we take your child and we move it out of your family and move it into another family. That child will learn to have that family's problems. If they grow up in your family, they're going to, you're going to teach them, educate them on have the same belief systems you have. But we have a tendency from this mall, the world and people never outgrow this. And of course, when you're a child, guess what they're all trying to do? Tell you what to do and make you do what they think you should do use you, abuse you, take from you, force you, whatever it is. And the child says, I have no control. You control me. Some people never outgrow that. They still operate. Well, the weather makes me bad. The government, my wife, my husband, my job, my past all makes me feel bad, which means I'm still a victim. But the upper model world says, Hey, you have the same experiences, lower and bottom model world, upper model world. The upper model world says, I hold these memories inside me. I'm using these memories against me. I respond to you, but my response is what I create within me. Yes, you got problems, but I don't have to take it with me. So the upper model world says, okay, I'm bothered right now, which I would call emotional intelligence 101. I'm bothered now. I have a problem and I'm going to change my problem. Now, of course, our brain operates in five different basic ways of holding memory, which you have the limbic system, which is a, I call the limbic system as a, an intelligent idiot. It takes in information, it organizes it, and it creates problems. It creates depression, it creates wealth, it creates love, it creates no love, loneliness, etc. But it only does it because it captures, organizes, and replicates. Upper my world says, hey, I'm responding to you. Oh, I'm holding this memory against me. Oh, I have my, these voices are inside of my head or mine. These feelings in my body are mine. So if I don't like that, I got to change it. We also call this what we'd call directed mindfulness, that we go in and we direct what's in our mind and we rearrange, organize, diffuse, rewrite the unpleasant ones. Lower model world says, you make me feel bad. Upper model world says, I'm responding to you. I don't like my response, so therefore I'm gonna change my response from within me. That's the basic differences. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant concept. Yeah, and it works. It works. It definitely works. Could you talk a little bit more about like the evolution with your children, Robert, like as you've tapped on yourself um, and even I know your kids also 
tap on themselves too. So nice. one out of three taps. <laughs> one out of three. Yeah, my oldest son, he's a tapper. And the other two, of course, you know, as as I began this stuff, you know, of course, dad was not the perfect dad. I had problems, emotional issues. And of course, you know, it's like it's like what Jesus said, a prophet is not recognized in his own home or his own city or state. But my oldest one does tap and he makes and he's he says, Dad, man, this tapping really has worked. I, you know, because he's he has uh, three kids, two of them he married into. And of course, being able to tap on himself to adjust his emotional issues and tapping on them makes it easier for them. So again, being able to tap on yourself. Now, my youngest son, now he's the one who's all my DVDs were videotaped by him. So he, I, you know, of course, he's at every seminar. He listens to that stuff. And he has what you call the mindset of the seminar. Basically, they're not hungry. <laughs> He's not going to eat it because I offer it. He goes, no, I'm not hungry. I don't want it. I said, I made this for you. He said, I'm not hungry. Well, as he got that from my, my weight loss seminars, you know. So, again, he has the mindset, which it is about a mindset. It's how you see things and perceive things. So, again, it's, you know, it is interesting. But, you know, you know, my oldest son, he's the one that does the tapping. He's a practitioner. He works on himself. He works on his children. He works on his, on his dad. <laughs> yeah, we had interesting interactions because, you know, we're talking about political stuff and he's on the far end and I'm on the normal end. <laughs> and he said the other day. About that in Australia, your political stuff. Yeah, uh, his, his birthday was on the 1st, and so he came over, and he said, you know, we, we drove the Superbird to uh, to somewhere, and he said, Dad, I just want to apologize. I tapped on our reaction, and I just, I said, it's no big deal. I didn't take it personal, you know. But again, it's just, it's just, it just creates what you call emotional adulthood, really. And that's really what it does. Emotional intelligence is the true wealth, honestly. Because, again, you can have four PhDs being locked in prison because, you're emotionally stupid. And again, emotional intelligence will live longer. Emotional intelligence will keep you pushing forward, having the ability to change how you feel and to handle people that have problems and not take it personal is truly the art of emotional intelligence, really. That taking it personally is a is a big one, has been for me and for many of the parents in our group. But that moment when uh, when our kids trigger us and, and we say this, this is one of our favourite lines we say over and over again that when you're triggered by your kids, that's, you know, they are our greatest teachers, our greatest opportunities for growth. So in that moment, when the child has spent hours on, on his screen or, or whenever he's doing something that's that inside me, I feel this anger, frustration, whatever it is coming up, and I know this is a ridiculous question, but what is the best thing to do right there in that moment? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> a very a simple question. one. Notice your response. Take a deep breath. Peace. <laughs> it's that simple. Don't get sucked in. Again, remember, we're supposed to be the adults in the situation. That's a difficult thing because they have a tendency to trigger us. You know, it, it, there's so many different scenarios that we could talk about. You know, a, a mother who has a child who didn't want a child or a mother who married someone and didn't like the guy she married and now she's not with him. And this son, this daughter may represent him. So our own emotional issues that we have towards them will be also projected on our child. So again, our own uh, childhood, how we were raised, if we were not raised very well, our parents yelled at us and humiliated us, embarrassed us, whatever it is that we were programmed, we have a tendency to give that program and use it on our own children. So again, we, we have a tendency to reuse and rehash what's been done to us and what we've experienced. So I always say, clean your head up. And if you were to do anything, I always say, go back and change your parents change your parents from inside yourself. You can't change the real parents, but the, remember if every person in your memory is actually you and every memory as it is an instruction on how to act and perform, if you have unpleasant memories about your mom, dad, or whoever, those are actually yours now and you are them. 
what you hold inside. So if you change your parents from inside you, you change your parenting skills that your mother had inside you, that's also giving your unconscious positive parenting skills. You know, somebody says, I hate it when I act like my mother. I don't ever want to be like my mother. And yet you got a million memories of your mother inside your head. Guess what you're going to do when you're not looking? You'll be acting like her. So the best way is go change her from within you. Because remember, your mom had her problems. She's had her traumas. She had her bad experiences. And she's going to act naturally from those, just like we do. So we've got to clean up our own head. Change yourself. And if you don't know how to do that, I am the guy to listen to. <laughs> and I say I, that with, I, yeah. I will say that with all humility and honesty. <laughs> this, this works. I guarantee it works. It's logical, it's practical, and it makes sense. I was helping a couple of mums do exactly that last night on our uh, call in our course group. And we were, cha we were changing the memories of their mom, like changing how they p perceive their mothers in their mind. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing, Robert, is that, as we know, the brain will hold on to the traumatic stuff probably first because of the survival. Mm -hmm. But once you start to change the stuff in your mind, it's interesting that a lot of the happier memories start to appear. Exactly. So could you speak a little bit to that? Like with, because yeah. they are there, they are in the mind somewhere. It's yeah, just you that think we tend to yeah. put them to the back. Yes. Well, yeah. if you think we don't necessarily do that consciously, put them in the back, but this is how the brain oh, works. Yeah. Yes. The, the limbic yeah. system is designed to keep you alive and keep you safe. So that means a pain has a larger scream inside the unconscious because you don't want pain again. So therefore it becomes forefront. That means it becomes a driving force. It's kind of like your mother picked you up at school every day from kindergarten to the third grade. Every day she picked you up. One day she forgets to pick you up and she's hours late. Why is it you don't remember that one? And you don't remember the 900 times she picked you up. And the reason this one here sticks out, screams louder because it's trying to keep you safe. So once you make peace with the pain and keep the wisdom of the experience, it allows the brain to open up and you can see the fullness of it. It's like the woman whose mother had passed now and she comes to my office, she goes, I can't find my mother, I can't find my mother. I said, where did you see her last? Um, well, she died, you know, 10 years ago. Did they steal her body? She goes, no, 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 I can't find her here. And so I said, well, please tell me about your mother. She said, well, my mother and I were best friends. We were close. But when she died, I hadn't cried since. So her brain figured out to tuck away the good memories because the pain was bigger than the good memories. Once we go in and make release the pain, all of a sudden, a flood of good memories were there. Now, if we practice and rehearse the positive memories, we have a tendency to follow suit in which we practice. That's why I say worries are great affirmations. Worries are great wishes. The more you worry about something, the bigger the worry gets, and it can control your whole life. So you've got to make sure you diffuse all worries. You've got to diffuse the negativity, which allows your brain to open up even more of the positivity. And it is there. But the reason why the others are larger is because of the limbic system is designed to keep you alive. And unfortunately, it also programs our children to have the same fear, same problem. Okay. Am I making sense? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you're making sense. <laughs> Yeah, and, and thank you for all that you offer to us for, like, to be able to access this work for, for free with your thousands and thousands of YouTube videos with millions of views. And uh, so that anybody who is, who is interested but uh, wants, wants to go and have a look, it's, it's so easy to access this work mm -hmm. for free. Thank you for making that available to all of us. You're welcome. You know, my whole purpose is, is to help people make a difference in their life. And, and I always say, if you really want to make a difference in the world, start with our children and start with yourself as a mother, as a parent, as a father, 
because our attitudes, our beliefs do ripple upon our children, do impact our children. And if we can teach emotional intelligence in our schools, with our children, with ourselves, the whole world will be a better place. So that's my, my goal, really. Yeah. It's a good one. <laughs> it's one of ours also, as well. <laughs> yeah. I also, yeah. Have, I also have online trainings that, that you, can, you can invest in. Uh, again, remember the most, most important money you could ever spend is in between your ears. And that's the ability to change how you feel. You know, you know, it's like this guy says, ah, oh God, I can't wait to go on vacation so I can relax. De-stress. I said, well, it's really great to go on vacation, but it doesn't really change much because you can't stay on vacation. You still have to go back home. You still have to go back to work. But if you can change your responses at work, your life can now always be on a vacation because you're not taking things too seriously. Yeah. And you can enjoy your life more. So actually that's a great thing to talk about too, Robert, because our, the fast of T system is different to talk therapy and other therapies. And it's, it's something, can you speak a little bit to, we, we do it qu quickly. We change things fast. We have a bit of, mm -hmm. we, we have fun doing it. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you say about that? Well, insight therapy has been around for a long time and insight therapy basically is talk therapy. And, and of course the model is if you understand why you have the problem, the problem should go away, but you're still talking about the problem 20 years later and now you've got it built more problems and the problem's still there. So the difference that makes a difference is this one difference, changing the memory. That's it. And knowing how to do that in a fast, quick way, the brain does it already anyway. The brain naturally changes memory all the time. It can make a bad memory worse or a good memory bad or a good memory better or a bad memory good if you know what you're doing. The brain naturally does it all the time. And, it's, you know, and it does it even without our conscious awareness, it still does it. And, and knowing how to do that in a way that will be more positive more productive and more effective in your longevity and your behavior with yourself and with your children is worth millions. I believe that you shouldn't spend much time in therapy. I think you should be spending your time having fun and enjoying life. If you have a bad problem, a memory or bad experiences, go change it. See one of my practitioners who are well-trained to immediately create neurological shifts inside your mind. Neuroplasticity 101 is your tactics faster of T. It's fast, it's easy. You don't even have to believe it works. All you have to do is be honest, try it, it works. This is mechanical. We don't believe, you know, it's not in the, the, the Aries and the fairies. It's, it's got your feet on the ground. It's logical, it's practical, and even children can use it. And actually they learn faster, really. And it's more effective with them as well. So it's, it's super simple. And basically it's going to the cause, change it immediately and you're free. Yay. Yeah. It's very, it is, it's very simple and yeah, it's a logical system. That's why I like it. Yeah. And, and, and we have a lot of fun doing, making the changes in our parenting group with all the parents. Yeah. It's you can, really, it's, they all changes, have it. <laughs> you know, changes are easy and you can have fun doing it. You yeah. Know, it, and if you go to a therapist and a therapist takes your problem seriously, you're going to seriously leave with a big problem. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> when, when a client comes to see me and they have a big problem, when they leave, they go, did I really have that problem? <laughs> you know? And the weird thing is they go, now listen, I've been to 14 therapists. I said, well, 15 is your lucky number. <laughs> what, do you, what have you been telling them? So they give me a long list of this same story they told every 14 therapists and we go and change it. Yeah. So now they can go spend time having fun instead of spending time in therapy room. Yeah. So then, I mean, that's my philosophy, really, you know, change it now. Change it it's, now. Yeah. 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 That's it. And keep the, and keep the wisdom of the experience. That's another thing too. A lot of times people say, well, who will I be without this bad experience? I said, better off. That's it. You'll still be you. Your name won't change. You'll still live in the same place. You'll probably be a bit nicer, nicer, healthier, but you'll still be you. And the question is, why would you give yourself a creative identity based on a bad memory? 
that, that's a big you... part for, for, for me. That took me a while until Ilka dropped a bit of gold on me where, um, Joe, you can still, you can still give up this and maintain your discernment. I felt like if I let go of, of what was, what felt like what was keeping me safe in a, in a dangerous moment that, I would lose my ability to keep myself protected, mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. But it's not true, though. Actually, holding the memory keeps you locked in an unsafe place. When you release the pain of it, it gives you the wisdom, says, I'm out of here. I'm not playing this game anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you very know that, powerful. Right? yeah, very powerful. Very yeah. powerful. So the reason why we hold on to fears, pains, and bad memories, we think if we hold on to it, it keeps us safe. But the truth is, that's the poison that keeps us sick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thank you, Robert, for um, being with us. It's been mm -hmm. an absolute pleasure. Thank you for training me over the last seven years <laughs> and um, giving me a, a joyful, amazing life because I, I, every day I get to wake up and do this work and I absolutely love it and get to help people change their lives. And it's, it's really. <laughs> it's good stuff, huh? Well, yeah. I, I will say this to you parents. Yeah. Listen, listen, guys, these are your children. Yeah. You're fully responsible to help them grow up to be the best they can. And it starts with you, really. It starts with loving you liking you, changing the stuff that you're worried about, you're afraid of. Clean this up and you'll live the example you want your children to follow. If you're worried, anxious and fearful and angry and whatever else is driving you, you're educating them on how to be just like that. Yeah. That's not, I don't think that's the best education in the world, but I know that's currently all you have. Learn how to clean your life up because they will need you. They will need your support when things are really bad. And if you've worked yourself through and you're clean, mentally, emotionally, and healthier, you're gonna be there for them when they need someone strong. So I, I, if, if I could say anything to you, learn to like you, learn to love you from within you. Changing all the unpleasant memories is the biggest, greatest form of ultimate forgiveness and true self-care. And as you practice that, You'll practice and practice and practice this on yourself and what you do inside, you'll give to them, everyone outside you. So just be nice to you, change what's inside and build a better, healthier you. And as you do that, your kids will be a whole lot healthier because of your interaction. Mm, thank you. Yes. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah, and do thank check you out, do much. check out my YouTube healing magic, uh, skills to change.com sign up for the free newsletter. We're here to support you. We've got a lot of amazing practitioners, uh, Elka, there's a lot of them all around the world, all time zones, just, just invest in you. It'll be a great reward for you. So thank you, Elka, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Robert. Robert, for being with one, us. one thing, it's very likely that many of the parents in our group will watch this and have questions. If mm -hmm. so, would you mind coming back to us another time and oh, uh, answering questions? That sounds great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Awesome. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, have a, have a neat, lovely evening there in All Oklahoma. Right. Bye. Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs>